Hi, it's Paul from Wicked Acorn. This is a curious little spot. I had to check it out for a future video. I was looking at it on an old OS map when I noticed this little curiosity. Nan Nook in Withenshaw Park. It's part of the grounds of a 16th century manor home over that away. At first the name made me chuckle. I mean, who doesn't love a bit of alliteration? And then I was transported back to school days. Did they make you watch this back in school? It's Nanook. Nanook of the North. It's probably not the best time of year to show you Nanook. It's February 16th. But there's a reason we're here today. It's Robert Joseph Flaherty's birthday. He was an American filmmaker who produced and directed the first commercially successful feature-length documentary film. Nan Nook of the North. Nan Nook of the North is a 1922 American silent film that combines documentary and docudrama. The documentary depicts the daily lives of Nan Nook, an Inuk man, and his family as they travel, hunt, trade and search for food in the Angava Peninsula of northern Quebec in Canada. Nanook and his family are portrayed as brave and enduring people who can withstand extreme conditions. The film shows Nanook and his family engaging in activities such as hunting a walrus, building an igloo, and performing other tasks that are necessary for their survival. In 1910, Robert J. Flaherty was employed by Sir William Mackenzie to explore and prospect for iron ore and other minerals along the Hudson Bay in Canada. During his expeditions, Flaherty became fascinated with the land and its people, and on his third trip in 1913, he brought along a glass plate still camera, a movie camera, and a portable printer and processor. Flaherty had no prior experience with film. He attended a three-week course in filmmaking and film processing with the Eastman Kodak Company in Rochester, New York, before embarking on his third expedition. Between 1914 and 1915, Robert J. Flaherty used a Bell and Howell camera, a portable printing and developing machine, and some lighting equipment to film hours of footage on Innu life in the Canadian Arctic. However, in 1916, Flaherty accidentally destroyed 30,000 feet of film when he dropped a cigarette onto the original camera negative. That stuff was highly flammable. Undeterred, Flaherty spent four years raising funds and secured the support of a French fur company, Revelon Frères, to return to the Arctic and shoot a new film. This time, he chose to focus on one Inuit family with Alakariolak as his main character. Flaherty was successful in capturing the daily life of Inuit people due to their full collaboration as cast and crew. Many of them knew his camera better than he did. The film Nanook of the North features the construction of an igloo. However, filming the interior of the igloo presented a significant problem for the filmmakers. The first igloo built was not big enough to accommodate the camera, and when they tried to enlarge it, the structure collapsed. The second igloo was successfully built, but the lighting inside was too poor for photography. To overcome this issue, the filmmakers constructed a smaller, three-walled igloo that allowed more light to enter making it possible to film the interior shots. Flaherty had initially envisioned a much larger igloo with a diameter of 25 feet, but it took multiple attempts to build a stable structure without it collapsing. Nanook and his companions worked for two days to build the igloo, with the women and children assisting them. However, they encountered a significant challenge when it came to cutting the insets for the five large slab ice windows without weakening the dome. The first two attempts ended in failure and the structure collapsed. Despite the setback, Nanook and his companions persisted and eventually built the big Aggie Igloo, with the women and children hauling barrels of water to strengthen the walls as they went up. When the Igloo was finally completed, the group stood back to admire their work, feeling as satisfied as small children over a house of blocks. However, the lighting inside the Igloo was still insufficient and the domes, half just over the camera, had to be cut away to capture the interior shots. As a result, Nanook and his family went to sleep, only to awaken with the cold air pouring in from outside. 
Nanook's real name was Alia Karyalak, and the two women in the film were not his wives, but rather common-law wives of Flaherty. Flaherty encouraged Alia Karyalak to hunt without his usual gun to capture the traditional Inuit way of life before European colonization. Flaherty also exaggerated the dangers Inuit hunters faced. Afterward, he would claim that Alia Karyalak had died of starvation shortly after the film's completion, although he actually died at home, likely of tuberculosis. The film has been criticized for portraying Inuit as lacking in technology and culture and comparing them to animals. Flaherty depended his work by stating that distortion was necessary to capture the spirit of the subject. Later filmmakers noted that the cameras available to Flaherty at the time were bulky and immobile, making it difficult to capture unstructured exterior scenes or interior shots without altering the environment or subject action. There's a scene where Nanook and his family meet white people at a trading post. Nanook brings his hunt from the year, including the skins of foxes, seals, and polar bears to trade. The scene is meant to be comical as the audience laughs at the naivety of Nanook and his people as they interact with Western culture. The trader plays music on a gramophone and shows Nanook how a man's voice can be canned. Nanook puts his ear closer as the trader cranks the mechanism again, and then he bites the record. However, the scene was entirely scripted, and Alia Karyaluk knew all too well what a gramophone was. Inuit used rifles for hunting and more Western clothing during the time of the filming of Nanook, but they were still knowledgeable about traditional ways. The film is not technically sophisticated. How could it be? With one camera, no lights, freezing cold, and everyone equally at the mercy of nature. But it has an authenticity that prevails over any complaints that some of the sequences were staged. If you stage a walrus hunt, it still involves hunting a walrus, and the walrus hasn't seen the script. What shines through is the humanity and optimism of the Inuit. Nanook of the North was an influential documentary that captured the lifestyle of Inuit, who were little known to the outside world at that time. The film was praised by critics and was commercially successful in the U.S. and abroad, inspiring others to make similar films. Nanook, the film's central character, was regarded as one of the most memorable figures in film history. In a 2014 poll, Film critics voted the documentary as the seventh best of all time. Rotten Tomatoes gave the film a 100% approval rating. Critics praised the documentary for its engaging storytelling and impressive visuals, which depict life in a challenging environment. Robert Flaherty's documentary Nanook of the North was one of the first documentaries ever filmed, and there were few established guidelines to follow at the time. Although the film was praised for its authentic portrayal of a little-known culture, today staging and reenactments passed off as real or steered by the director are considered unethical. During the earliest years of film production, short actualities of real people in real places were dominant. Flaherty's innovation was to combine these actualities and add details of indigenous work and play to create a unique portrayal of the culture. I had visions of one of the Tatans of Withenshaw Hall funding an expedition to the north and naming, naming these woods after it, Nanook, in honor of uh, the expedition. But it's not so. Uh, Nanook here at uh, Withenshaw Park predates, uh, predates the film. It was, uh, it was probably just somewhere where old grandmother Tatton would sneak off and drink sherry and smoke cigarettes. <laughs> And they named it in honor of her. It's, it's Nan's Nook. Nanook, Nanook, by the way, is uh, from Inuit mythology. Nanook is the master of the bears, the polar bear. So that's what we used to do when the teacher was too hungover to teach a lesson. They'd sit us down to watch something like Nanook of the North in a dark room on a 16 millimeter projector. Maybe next time I'll tell you about reefer madness.